so hello students hope you are doing well so in today's session we will be just seeing the concept of operator overloading in c++ so in our earlier lectures we have just seen that we can achieve compile time polymorphism okay, through compile time polymorphism can be achieved with the help of number one function overloading that we have discussed okay and the second is operator overloading okay so the second is operator overloading that is the area of concern for today's session so in function overloading what we are doing we are just defining several functions with the same name and they are processing the different tasks in operator overloading also the main focus is on operator okay the main focus is on operator and what exactly is operator operator is basically okay the operator is basically a special symbol okay this is a special symbol that is used okay to perform some valued operations on implicit data types okay it is a special symbol that is used to perform to perform some valid operations okay some valid operations on implicit data type on implicit data types okay implicit data types means the data types that is known to the compiler okay so in operator overloading an operator is used to perform a particular operation and on operands okay so for example if i just write okay i write a special syntax for example i write 10 plus 20 okay so what is the meaning of this particular statement 10 plus 20 okay so it means that okay the operator so this is an operator this is a binary operator now okay this is a binary operator this is binary operator and what we are doing we are doing binary addition so this operator is used to add two numbers okay so these two numbers are the integer numbers okay so this is also an integer number and this is also an integer number so this integer is known to the compiler okay and we can say that these are the primitive data types okay these are primitive okay primitive data types or you can say implicit data types okay so primitive or implicit means that is the data type that is known to compiler whose meaning is known to compiler that yes i have to perform this particular operation on these type of data okay so 10 is a constant it is of type integer 20 is a constant it is of type integer and we are just adding two integer okay constants and the result will be obtained because the compiler knows that yes how to add these two constants okay because they are of type integer and it is known to compile okay so we can also say that this 10 and this 20 okay so if this is an operator so these 10 and 20 are the operands these are known as the operands okay so what is an operand an operand is something okay an operand is something in which in which some operation is performed some operation is performed okay so here 10 and 20 are considered considered as operands okay so these are operands okay so both of these are operands and the plus is the operation okay so this is the operation that is going to be performed on these operands and these operands are primitive operands you can see okay or they belong to primitive data type because 10 is an integer okay so if i write 20.5f so this is a floating point okay so this is float if i write 30.60 so this is a double so the the meaning of these particular okay these particular constants or these particular integers or floating type of variables it is known to the compiler that yes i am knowing that how the operation is going to be performed by this particular operator okay but what if if we just do certain operations like 
okay for example okay we have as we have discussed in the earlier lectures also okay we have created certain objects and in that particular objects if we have passed okay certain parameters okay so for example these are certain parameters that we are passing okay on these objects okay so for example these c1 c2 c3 are the objects of type complex okay so these are of type you can say complex so we just write here complex so as we have discussed in the earlier lecture that how to add a complex number okay so the real part will be going to add with the real part of c2 and the imaginary part of c1 is going to add with the imaginary part of c2 so that we have discussed okay so what we are doing what is our approach if we are going to do this type of thing so what we do we just write something like this that c3 is equal to c1 okay dot and we just create a method okay add and in this method we just pass c2 as an argument so this we have just okay completed this we have seen that how to pass an object as an argument and to return the object as an argument okay but what if okay what if if i just write this particular type of thing that c3 is equal to c1 plus c2 so if i try to write this particular thing or if i try to execute this particular statement then the compiler will raise an error okay then the compiler will raise an error okay so the compiler will say that i don't know that what is this type of operation okay this type of operation is not in my knowledge okay because the these particular variables okay these particular variables or these particular objects are non primitive data types okay these are non primitive data types okay why they are non primitive data types because user has created them okay because they are because they are a part of class because they are a part of class okay because what is an object object is something that describes a class okay and they are a part of a class and what is a class and class is a user defined you can say data type okay class is a user defined okay data type so class is being created by the user okay class is something that is created by the user it is abstract you can say okay so now the compiler will be okay in a state that how can i add these particular okay non primitive data types okay because compiler knows that this addition operator is only defined or this addition operator is only valid for the particular okay for the particular you can say variables or for the particular data types that are in knowledge of the compiler okay so whether they are integer whether they are float whether they are long whether they are double and whether they are sort and so on because all these data types are of type primitive so we can perform these type of operations but we can't add okay something like that object 1 and object 2 okay we can't add okay let us suppose a constant to an object okay we can't add an object to a constant okay so these type of operations now the compiler is not in a condition to do these type of tasks okay because the definition of addition operator is only defined for the primitive data types okay compiler can only add can only subtract and only perform the operations on the primitive data types or the implicit data types okay it can't perform the operation on user defined data types or non primitive data types so in order to achieve this okay in order to achieve the operations like addition of two objects division of two can say two objects multiplication of two objects okay or to perform the operations like okay you can say we can add okay two different okay data types that are one is of type primitive and other is of type non primitive we can add okay two non primitive data types so these type of operations can be performed now with the help of the concept of overloading so now the overloading is in picture that why it is being used okay so because of this operator overloading okay because of this operator overloading okay now we can achieve these type of tasks also so we can see okay how we will achieve this task 
so i will just give you an example that for example if i write okay 100 so for example if i write plus 100 so what it means it means that this 100 is a positive number okay it is a positive number and we can say that this plus is a unary plus okay this is a unary plus okay unary means only one operand is okay is being processed by the particular operator okay only there is only one operand that is involved in the processing so here you can see there is only one operand that is 100 so this is only one single operand okay and plus is the operator in the same way if i just say minus 200 so in this also this is known as unary negation okay unary negation okay so it means this is minus 200 so only one operand is involved here that is again 200 and only single operator is there that is this is the minus operator okay so now the work of the minus operator is not to subtract okay the work of this minus operator is to negate the value for example if the value of x is 200 so it is just negating it as minus 200 okay so it is only performing the operation on a single operand in the same way if i just write okay if i just write okay 10 plus 20 or if i just write a plus b so it means or if i just write x minus y so all these particular statements it says that the operation is being performed okay the plus or the minus operation is being performed on two operands okay so this is one operand and this is one operand this is one operand this is one operand this is one operand and this is one operand so these are the operands on which we are performing the operation okay so these are known as binary okay these are known as binary plus or these are known as binary minus operation okay binary addition or binary negation so here two simple data types are being added okay that is of type integer here let us suppose a and b are of type objects okay these are of type class and they all they both belongs to a same class so these are the objects of a class so we are adding two objects here x and y are also the objects and we are performing a binary subtraction on this object okay so if i write let us suppose c1 plus 10 so it is also a binary addition so in this one object and one primitive data type is involved so non one non primitive data type and one primitive data type is involved so all these type of task is being performed by the concept of operator overloading so what exactly is operator overloading now you should be able to answer okay so for example this is an operator so we can achieve okay we can achieve 5 plus 5 also okay we can achieve with the help of this plus operator okay 5 and any object okay and we can achieve with the help of this operator c1 and c2 so in the first case simply two primitive data types are being added in the second case one primitive data type and one non primitive data type it means that both the data types are different the operation is being on multiple data types and in the third case the addition operation is being performed on the two user defined data types or these are also known as explicit data types or these are known as non primitive okay data types so if this type of scenario is there then we can say that we can perform this type of task only with the help of operator overloading so that's why operator overloading is very important in c++ programming okay so what it is doing okay it is just okay performing something like same operator okay same operator so this is a simple definition of operator overloading same operator is being used okay is being used or overloaded okay or overloaded for multiple tasks okay for multiple tasks or you can say different task okay so this plus operator is being overloaded to add to okay primitive data types it can add to non primitive data types also or it can add one primitive and one non primitive data types okay so this is a condition in which a single operator is being used to 
परफॉर्म मल्टीपल ऑपरेशन सो दिस इज नोन एज ऑपरेटर ओवर लोडिंग सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ देर आर सर्टेन केसेज ओके देर आर सर्टेन प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ऑपरेटर ओवर लोडिंग दैट वेर ऑपरेटर ओवर लोडिंग इज परफॉर्म एंड वेर ऑपरेटर ओवर लोडिंग कैन नॉट बी परफॉर्म ओके सो वी कैन परफॉर्म सो दीज आर सम प्रॉपर्टीज यू कैन जस्ट नोट इट डाउन सो द प्रॉपर्टीज आर ओके वी कैन ओवरलोड वी कैन ओवरलोड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके वी कैन ओवरलोड only existing operators okay the operators that are existing okay in c++ only that only those operators can be overloaded so only existing operators can be overloaded we cannot overload any new operators okay second thing is that okay the operators that are valid in c okay the operators that are valid in c okay can be overloaded okay can be over loaded in c++ also so there are some operators like plus minus multiplication okay so these operators can be overloaded okay assignment operator is also a valid operator in c so it is also a very valid operator in c++ so it is also overloaded but there are certain exceptions also okay there are certain exceptions also the exceptions are that okay the exceptions are there are certain exceptions and the exceptions are the operators like okay so there are certain operators that we can't overload okay so the exceptions like the operator that is this scope resolution operator this is the scope resolution okay operator this operator is a valid operator in c++ so this operator cannot be overloaded okay next is, so there is also a operator that is known as a ternary operator or a conditional operator okay so this is a conditional operator or you can say this is a ternary operator okay ternary operator you have just seen this operator in your c programming also so this operator is a valid operator in c but it can't be overloaded in c++ so, so these are some exceptions so the next operator is the dot operator okay so this dot operator is also a valid operator in c++ but there is an exception that we can't overload this operator here okay so the cross means that we can't overload these operators okay so this this is the list of some operators again there is an operator that is star dot that is this the dereferencing operators okay so both these operators are known as the member you can say the member access operators so these are member access operators so these are also not overloaded okay size of operator size of operator okay so this is also not overloaded in c++ okay so these are some exceptions that we can't overload these type of operators here now again there is a important okay this is a important you can say note that we can't okay we can't change we can't change the meaning of the operator okay we can't change the meaning of operator in overloading but it means it means that if you are trying to overload a plus operator then this the work of this plus operator is to add okay we can't use it to subtract okay so the the main functionality or this operator has been defined for adding so it can't be used for subtraction so we can't change the meaning of this operator so this you have to remember okay part of operator overloading thanks